Baby, the fluffiest of the world is me, Queen Nightmare, and 11 days left. Ooh, can't wait. And thank you guys for all your support. I'm almost to 400 subscribers. Thank you for everything. You are the best. And please, if you have not yet, click the subscribe button and put on push notifications so you'll be updated every time I post. <laughs> and we are going on from the Dreary Christmas One-Shots by May Dori. Dori. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. Um, and it's called The Jumper. Over the summer, Draco had come to stay at the Burro because the ministry deemed it to be the safest place for Draco to go. Draco conf confessed later on that he wouldn't have gone back to the manor anyway. It held too many painful memories. On the first day Draco arrived, they both agreed to put aside their differences and their past and try to become friends. Harry and Draco had to share a room. More than often, neither of them could sleep, so they stayed up all night talking. The two became close, really close. Harry realized he loved Draco and had done for... Um, and had so for a long time. But he was too scared to act on his feelings. He had broken up with Trini shortly after the war because he wasn't sure he loved her anymore. One evening, about halfway through the holidays, Draco took Harry for a walk and asked him to be his boyfriend. Harry was overjoyed and, of course, said yes. Though, since then, those two had practically been inseparable. It was clear to everyone that they loved each other and with all they had. When they came back to Hogwarts, someone, everyone was a bit shocked at first, but they were seen as it, as the it couple. Draco had also become quite close to the to the rest of the Weasley family. He apologized for what he had said in the past, and Molly scooped him up into a giant hug and forgave him. As it was Christmas time, and in their final year at Hogwarts, Hermione had managed to convince Harry, Ron, and Draco to come back to the f complete their final year, and they were all thankful that they came back. Christmas at Hogwarts was the be was beautiful as ever. The tree in the Great Hall seemed even more magnificent in the previous years. Stars, baubles, snowflakes, tinsels, tinsels, and lights were delicately placed on the tree to make it look perfect. And the angel on the top very top of the tree, the ceiling of the great hall was charmed to make it look as if it was snowing and decorations were spreading all over the Hogwarts, all over Hog, all around Hogwarts. Christmas was truly magical. Holiday at Hogwarts. Truly magical at Hogwarts. Not many students come back to complete their final year. There was around 40 students. <laughs> Draco, Pansy, Blaze were the only Slytherins to come back. McGonagall decided to have one common room for the eighth years. She appreciated that it would be hard for them. Um, appreciated that it would be hard for them all, uh, all of them coming back to Hogwarts, as they all fought in the war. So she had a kitchen put in the common room. If the students want to eat, uh, to eat there, every student also <laughs> had their own room with a double bed, a wardrobe, a desk, and an armchair. The room was charmed to cu customize the cu color of the walls to whatever the student wanted the room to look like. Harry and Draco shared a room, as did Ron and Hermione, and pa uh, Pansy and Blaze stayed in the their own room as well. But everyone knew that they liked each other and. Their pride got in the way got in the way of them telling them telling their true feelings for each other. The six of them 
had decorated the common room together, and it looked amazing. Harry and Pansy decorated the tree. Hermione and Draco um, figured out how to charm the ceiling as it looked like the great halls. And Ron and Blaze went around putting decorations uh, um, pretty much everywhere. Only the six of them stayed over the Christmas holidays. Everyone else went home, and the six loved it. They could basically do whatever they wanted. One night, they all got drunk, really drunk, even Hermione, and they had a game of truth or dare. It's just, let's just say it got very sexual. It was Christmas Eve, and everyone was getting to bed, ready for bed. There was a pile of presents under the tree, all wrapped in red and green paper. There was a sense of magic in the air. The fire was slowly dying, and the fairy lights dimly lit the room. The snow was gently falling outside, and the ceiling of the room mirroring outside. Good night, <laughs> Hermione. Good night, Harry. Um, Hermione yawned. She gave everyone a hug before walking to her uh, to hers and Ron's bedroom. It was a mini tradition between the six of them to give a hug to everyone before they went to bed. I'm going to go as well. Ron gave everyone a quick hug. Don't be surprised if I wake, wake you up in the morning. I swear, if you wake me up any time before half, before seven and a half, I will hex you, Draco said. Sure, Malfoy. <laughs> and Ron laughed. Don't try me, we a Weasley. Draco a uh, said, threatening. All right, all right. Put his hands up in the air. Night, everyone. Harry and Draco were next to go their wet room to their room. They each hugged Pansy and Blaze be before walking to their bedroom. Draco's ar uh, arm was over Harry's shoulder. Harry jumped into the bed crawled up in the covers, and the bed sank a little as Draco, Draco got in it. And Harry waited for the familiar warmth of Draco's body next to him. Good night, baby. Merry Christmas. Draco pressed his lips to Harry's lips. Good night, Dre. Merry Christmas. I love you. I love you, too. Next morning, Harry and Draco, Draco were awoken by a banging on the door. Fuck me. What time is it? Uh, gladly. <laughs> Draco gave Harry, Harry a gentle push as he checked the time. It's 7.29, Ron. I am go close to coming out there and hexing your, you if you do don't stop. Oh, it's Christmas, Draco. You wouldn't hex me on Christmas, would you? You got lucky. Now go away. We'll be down in five. <laughs> Draco ne nuzzled his face into Harry's neck. Merry Christmas, baby, Draco said. <clears throat> Draco said. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Draco said in his voice slightly muffled. Merry Christmas, Jay. Harry turned over and gave Draco a kiss. Come on, we best get up. Harry rolled out of bed and put his slippers and wrapped his wrapped a blanket around himself. Draco got out of bed surprisingly without any complaints. Put his slippers and dressing gown on. Draco grabbed Harry's hand as they walked out of the room and downstairs. Merry Christmas, guys. <laughs> Harry smiled as he gave everyone a hug. Harry and Harry Draco, uh, Draco, Harry, and Hermione s sat on the couch while Ron, Pansy, and Blaze sat on the floor. They spent most of the morning listening to Christmas music and opening presents for each other and their family. And Harry and Ron were wearing their Weasley jumpers. Ron's was blue, 
with a black R, and Harry's was red with a yellow H. Ron had one present by his by his side all morning, but no one asked about it. Finally, they when the, everyone was finished opening all their presents and exchanging hugs and kisses, Ron brought out, out the present on it onto his lap. Okay, so I believe this is the last present. This is a reason. <laughs> there is a reason I have been saving it until last. So Draco, Draco passes. Ron passes the present over to Draco. It's for me. Draco asked us a little shocked. Yep, Ron uh, replied. Now open it. Draco uh, Draco op- uh, opened it slowly. When he had finished opening the wrapping paper, his eyes fell filled with tears as he re- uh, he reasoned what the green woolen fabric was that was laying on his lap. He picked it up, and there was his own Weasley jumper. It was a a forest green with a gray D on the on the front of it. Everyone had fallen silent. They were all smiling. This is for me. You're part of the family now, mate. We can see how much you love Harry, and that you two are gonna be together forever. Also, you became my brother. And everyone's brother over the summer. We all love you, Harry said softly. Uh, Ron said softly. Thank you, Drake, who put the jumper and put on the jumper and admired it. Thank you so much, Draco stood up and pulled Ron into a hug. Thank you. Welcome to the Weasley family, Ron said as he hugged Draco back. Oh, that is so adorable. That was the jumper. And the next story will be after an ad. But while I'm talking with the ad playing, I would like to say that this was absolutely amazing. And thank you for, like, tuning in to talk to me and not talk to me, to listen to this podcast well not broadcast but to this experience let's just say that and it was really fun to getting to do this with all of you watching and listening to me it can be boring trust me um thank you for everything guys and i hope You have a good weekend and a good holiday. Thank you so much. And the next one is called um, The Red Cups. Oh boy, this might not be good. Okay, thank you guys for tuning in or watching. I hope you love this. Comment down below what you want to see next. And... Well, just say hi, maybe, or tell me what you want to hear next. I love you guys so much, and tell me down below if you want to hear a creepypasta fan fiction. Okay, guys, bye-bye!